let's start recording and say hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series of episodes. That's right, it's called Between Buddies and I'm here with my good buddy, Jace. Hello. And Captain Soldier 76. Hello. So if people have, uh, recently, at least one person has said, how come you guys, you guys should just make a show where you're just talking to each other? And uh, I said, we are planning that because I've recently noticed that we just like to talk to each other and it's very hard to sync it up to joke on gameplay. <laughs> it's almost impossible because we always run over or run under. I, I, I like finish the fight seven minutes in and then meanwhile, Captain Soldier's still talking about something. And it's like, well, I don't want to cut this because I think it's funny, so we'll keep it going. So that's why we've we've decided to make Between Buddies. And of course, Raccoon will join us whenever he's away from the Nether Realm, wherever he currently is. I know where he is, but... I know. <sighs> that poor soul. Poor soul. <laughs> so yeah, Between Buddies poor is just... Soul. Between Buddies has one uh, one goal, and that's just to talk between buddies, and there'll be random topics for every single time. And thankfully, we have our first one. Jace, why don't you introduce what it is today? We're talking current anime news. Well, current as in happened this year at some point. <laughs> well, I thought it was going to be way more controversial than that, but okay, I'm down with that. <laughs> what, did, what did you think? We were talking about abortions or something? What? What? No, I thought we were about to get into doves versus subs because that's a very hot topic, apparently. Well, oh. technically, we are talking about abortions. That abortion of a Netflix dub <laughs> so, and translation so the, for the, Ava. <laughs> So I think the one thing I remember someone saying about the Ava dub, I think I remember seeing like a long article about why the Ava dub is so bad. And it was because there was some, there was a dub of the second Evangelion movie and they showed it to a crowd of Evangelion fans and they were hooting and hollering and they were basically going like, you know, as a bunch of anime fans would to something they like. And when they're in a crowd of just people that they like, and apparently the Japanese producers were fucking mortified because they're like, this is a serious movie. Why are they acting this way? What the fuck is wrong with these people? So then they then the delay of they actually delayed the dub and they completely re-recorded it and they made it as flat as possible. And since then, they've tried to keep all their dubs as flat as possible so that as to not rile up Americans. You know what? So, speaking of dubs, in general, if I watch something dubbed first, I will not have a problem with it. But, like, if yeah. I have seen it in another language, and I know what that sounds like, and the dub is very different from that, I, then I will complain, because it's it's so different. Yeah. One of the... I started watching the... Um the Japanese version of Jojo. And once you go to the like dub version of it, it just, uh, it's not the same. It's not the same when you have a Japanese person saying stuff in English. <laughs> so when you try and translate that to uh, a dub version, it just doesn't work out that well. Well, American voices don't go as deep <laughs> as Japanese like characters can. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like that really deep, like oh, yeah. from the, yeah, that like from the fucking diaphragm, like <laughs> like that that super deep voice. Yeah, and JoJo has a lot of those characters. <laughs> I would say I'm it's glad pretty... you went for it because yeah. I was uh, I was hoping someone was gonna go for that. All my deep voices <laughs> come from uh, uh, watching episodes of Gaki no Sukai and listening for voices <laughs> like that. I fucking love that show. <laughs> it's really good and they have really good deep voices but yes yeah, specifically i remember a character like for example dio who's like literally like super deep but then he's also like has a trolling sing-song voice is super hard to translate into like actual american <laughs> like how do you translate saying the word mademoiselle in a japanese accent and making it good <laughs> and the answer is you really can't Oh, man. You lost me. <laughs> you lost me for a second because I was like, wait, that's not a Japanese word. No, it's not. I, but that's the. I don't watch JoJo's. <laughs> okay. There is a very good clip of Dio where he says Mademoiselle, but he has a Japanese accent when saying Mademoiselle. And Mademoiselle. <laughs> Mademoiselle. Which like... <laughs> is actually very accurate to how it's actually supposed to be pronounced. Yeah. By the way. Okay. 
Okay, so you're one of those people, huh? Okay. <laughs> I, the... I am. I took look. I took French in high school, so you know, I need to use it for something because I'm currently not using it. Biggest mistake in my life. If you were in high school, don't take French. Take Spanish, especially if you live in California. Best I... <laughs> idea ever. I took Spanish, and I don't use any of that Spanish. So maybe don't take another language at all. Don't <laughs> learn new languages, everyone. No, you have to if you're in California. California, it's part of the curriculum. They force you to learn a new language. Uh, okay, so funny, funny story about that. It was part of the curriculum, Holmes. It's no longer that. Exactly. <laughs> so I put off learning a language until my junior year. And I was like, you know what? I'll just take language junior and senior year because fuck it. Everyone else does it, you know, their freshman and sophomore year. I put it off. And then the year that I became a junior, they canceled that shit. <laughs> no, they did not. Maybe in your they school. Did. No, okay, okay. So we're we're the same class, right? Yeah. Um, so I remember my friend I, I will tell this story because I and I feel like I've told it to you guys before. The only time I have ever gotten kicked out of class in high school or any school setting was because we were sitting in French class. This is when we were freshmen. Our friend didn't it's not that he didn't take it too seriously. He just, he, he didn't care or like, he, he didn't care about it. the French. It's a very common yeah. American attitude. He was, he was in it. He was in it just, just to pass the curriculum, All right. I guess. But How he, long? he wasn't paying attention. And like teacher had called on him to read a, read a passage. And it wasn't even just to translate. It was just to read it. And like, K is a pretty common word. So, I started fucking dying when the first word wasn't a French word. It was someone's name. It was Monique. And he didn't say Monique. He said Monique. I fucking died. <laughs> and the teacher immediately kicked me out. <laughs> she, as, as she should. Because she was like, you don't laugh at somebody trying to speak another language. But I was sitting there like, this is my best friend. I don't give a shit. That shit was funny as fuck. <laughs> so I got sent in the hallway for a good, I don't know, I think five minutes until the class was done. She let me back in. But that was the only time I've ever gotten kicked out of class. Now, knowing the way that you laugh, were you still laughing when you were outside? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If but... anything, all you did was disturb other people who were trying <laughs> to, like, enjoy their, their learning experience. So, um, like, he, my, my friend, didn't, uh, he took uh, French with me for two years, right? And I think he failed the second one. Or he gave up. But the point is, I know for a fact that it wasn't um, removed from the cur uh, curriculum. After that is because uh, he had he still had to take a foreign language, and instead of just retaking French too, he switched to Spanish. So in my our junior year, he took Spanish, and then our senior year, he took Spanish too, and he passed it. But I, that's why I was like conflicted when you said that they removed it from the curriculum. That may be true now, but that definitely wasn't true when we were still in high school. Dude, it was true when we were in high school, bitch, because I graduated. I have my diploma. <laughs> <laughs> I maybe. took no language classes. He also, maybe at your school. He also did say he waited till literally the last time, the last year, and then on the last year. So he wasn't a, a freshman like you were, so he actually just waited, and then eventually he didn't have to pass any of that. I'll also say that I think that's true for me, too, because I didn't pass my Spanish shit at all, and I and I was able to graduate. Yeah, in the end, all you needed was, like, extra class credits. It didn't matter what you're going to take, but you had to take something extra, and I doubled down on art. Yeah, <laughs> and I learned how to properly take care of a baby through <laughs> through CD-ROMs that they mailed to me, and they said, please watch this. And I said, okay. And then I watched the first one and said, I'm never gonna use this. And then returned it and said, I'm done. And then they said, congrats, you passed! <laughs> but in retrospect, uh, we both should have learned a second language, at least Spanish. Like, we understand Spanish, but we Both Wokey and I do not utilize that power. I only use it to make it seem funny. Like, I only say K, or I try and horribly mispronounce names. That's the only time I ever use Spanish. So funny enough, my my uh, partner at work is convinced that I know Spanish. And... <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but like, como estas? Like, wait, 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 wait. wait. Soldado seventy six. Let me let me describe how she believes that I speak Spanish. So I I You're I, brown, I So I'm brown. Yeah, <laughs> perfect. That's the sole reason why. But no, actually, that probably has something to do with it. But anyway, oh, no. um, <laughs> uh, so I, I I have my my clients at work. Um, my group is mostly Spanish speaking. They understand English, so it's not a problem that I work with them. I, I'm able to get off basic instructions and like point of my job anyway whether they spoke spanish or not or if they spoke uh, a chinese language which we do have those clients the point is that you're going to be speaking to clients that have very limited communication skills and whether they speak english or not is irrelevant so my clients speak spanish my partner sees me from time to time say like phrases in spanish that i have picked up from these guys and it's enough to the point where she's like, dude, you know Spanish. Don't fucking lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> dude, you just fucking said this shit in Spanish. And there's no way in hell that if you didn't speak Spanish that you would know that. I was like, uh, sure. Okay. So I have like played this game to see how far I can go before she realizes that, hey, I don't actually speak Spanish. But so far, it's hilarious. And also... I have picked up a lot of Spanish because I listen to a lot of reggaeton stations. <laughs> so you understand the ultimate uh, Spanish word, Daddy Yankee, which means Father Yank. <laughs> Suffice to say, uh, Ginyu has now been promoted to an ambassador of uh, <laughs> to speak in Hispanic countries, being an Asian man and not knowing any Spanish at all. I, hey man, fake it till you make it, as they say. It's not that hard. You just kind of pick up their overall hand motions, and you understand what they're speaking in Spanish. <laughs> it's funny because that that is how. Because like my my clients will speak to me, and then I'll be like, oh yeah, okay, I get it, I understand. And then my my partner will look at me, feel like, wait, you understood that? I'm like, yeah, I understood that. And she'll be like, you fucking know Spanish. I'm like, I okay. No, it's all I about... don't. It's, it's about really. context. I <laughs> context clues. <laughs> it's all about context, but it's yeah. always funny. So I, I'm only going to be there for like another week. So we'll see. Maybe she'll figure it out, but it'll be funny. At the end, that's when you're going to reveal, I don't know any Spanish. And then you start <laughs> speaking perfect French. <laughs> right? it's, like, it's not like I've hidden this knowledge from her. I straight up told her at one point, I'm like, dude, I don't know Spanish. And like the paranoia, she's like convinced, so convinced that she's tried to convince other people at work that I know Spanish. And then like my my friends from work will be like, "Wait, do you know Spanish?" I'm like, "No, you know this." And they'll be like, "Okay, holy Are shit, you sure? she's she's trying to." <laughs> So this is the weirdest case of gaslighting I've ever seen, where one person is trying to gaslight everyone else around them. <laughs> It's not like I'm I'm hiding the truth. She knows the truth. Everybody knows the truth. It's just that they they're convinced at this point because they have seen me interact and they know that I'm a joker and I, I like to hide things. Like I don't I purposely like keep information about myself from them. So they know that show with power levels. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So now they're convinced that maybe Captain Guinea knows Spanish. So funny enough. Uh, bringing it back to the anime thing, that's yeah. actually what caused me as a young kid. Because, you know, you live in California your entire life. Everyone speaks Spanish. Mm -hmm. My family speaks Spanish, and they speak Spanish to each other. And uh, from, a, from necessity, you know, I would pick up a couple things. But it was only until a certain thing happened to me where I was like, uh, I got to get on that Spanish game and at least learn it. I don't got to speak it, but I need to understand. And that <laughs> that event was finding out that uh, it must have been Telemundo or a different channel, but they were airing Dragon Ball in Spanish. It was and they had all, they had all the episodes before the Toonami versions. So I was like, oh my God, this is that new shit. <laughs> I didn't even know what's going on with Goku and Vegeta. <laughs> Vegeta? <laughs> And you want to talk about deep voices, Piccolo had the deepest voice for Goku. <laughs> Dude, fucking Goku's Spanish voice. I love Goku's Spanish voice. And then hearing the English version, it's like, okay, that's all right. And then you hear the Japanese version, and you're like, oh, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> that's one thing, yeah. yeah. That's another thing, like, for subs versus dubs. 
of course we all heard the English version first. Yeah. So that voice is so like normal to us. But when we watch it, you know, that fresh stuff in Japanese, we're like, this is extremely jarring. And I get it. Cause like his voice is supposed to encapture the feel and his mind his childlike mind. Yeah. The funny thing is, is that I eventually, because of, you know, because I play a bunch of uh, uh, DBZ games that are in Japanese, I hear her voice a lot. So I eventually have grown accustomed to it. And also just like a really like mad respect for this woman who has been voicing Goku since the first airing of Dragon Ball. Not even like the current like adult voice of Goku voices Kid Goku. She voices Kid Goku. She voices Goku. She voices Gohan. She voices Goten. I think she voices everyone but Bardock. <laughs> <laughs> she just, this came out in the eighties, right? Yeah, yeah, way late. And I think that's the same thing for um, uh, this is also related. The voice of Aureli when because that was out in the seventies, Doctor Slump, and when they returned for Dragon Ball Super, same voice actress. They just brought her back to do Aureli again. <laughs> And it's funny because the way that they've trained their voice is something that's completely different. Like if you if you've seen old Scrooge McDuck and like uh, like Ducktales, and then you try and play that video game where he's like a hundred years old and he's going, "Hey, laddie, I gotta go get me a pot of gold or whatever," <laughs> like Scrooge McDuck says, it's it sounds like he's dying on screen. <laughs> like he just has no uh, real control over his voice in a way. Like you can hear the tiredness. Where I don't hear the tiredness in Goku. Also, did I DC? Can you guys hear me? No. Okay. No. Sorry, my mic muted. <laughs> oh. Okay, don't leave me in silence. I I can't. <laughs> if there's no one to react to me, then I don't know if I'm doing good. Please, <laughs> please talk to me. I actually muted myself also. And then, like, I started saying something, and I was like, oh, wait. <laughs> Me <Well>, too? <laughs> Hello, Scrooge? Because you were, you were talking, and I was like, I better not uh, roll over what he's saying here. So I just muted myself. And I was like, <laughs> I was replying, but, you know, fuck that. <laughs> uh, uh, I started watching um, Mob Psycho 100. Mm-hmm. And I watched it first in English because I was using it as something to put on the background while I while I work. And that I just fucking fell in love with this show. And I made it to the point where, because they're doing a simulcast, or as close as to a simulcast as you can with the American dubbing. Yeah. Um, you know, it just takes a couple weeks to get the next episode done. So <laughs> I reached a point where I ran out of episodes in season two and then i just had to watch the japanese shit because i was just so enamored with it and i was like oh, i gotta see what happens next and then all of a sudden different voices and i was like ah fuck it <laughs> <laughs> this works i need it i need that anime real bad <laughs> you need to get into your veins as quickly as possible sometimes you just need that hit it's true. And you know what's the funny thing is, is that and this is something that's also uh, related to Dokkan because I remember hearing about people who did this and it was fucking crazy to me. But that you know how when Dragon Ball Super was, was first coming, how Dragon Ball Super has come out and how the English dub has not even reached the end of Super has been over for, I think, over a year. And the, the cast of it, like the dub of it is not done yet. Yeah, yeah. There were people specifically in Dokkan who said you need to hide all the J uh, Japanese posting of the game because it's spoiling super for me. I don't know what I don't want to know what's happening next. And it's like, well, this is unfortunate because now Dokkan's adding stuff from super way before like they actually talk about it in the dub. So they're like, well, I'm 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 trying to take in no information. I only want to see it for the English release. And it's like, are you fucking insane? That's literally impossible. <laughs> like, you better you learn to read, motherfucker. <laughs> like, even something like Fighter Z, which has DLC characters from the Endgame of Super, like, 
it's literally impossible to just not know what's gonna happen next like you automatically know what's gonna happen but there were specific people who were just like i'm so crazy waiting for the dub i'm going on an all dbz media blackout not possible (laughs) Yeah, it just ain't possible, man. Especially with Dokkan, because Dokkan literally just releases hype units and goes, here you go, fuckers, deal with this. <laughs> it's wild to me that after all this year, like, after all these years, how Dragon Ball still has a strong foothold, like, online. They're not done or and, and, and in, in person, like, everywhere. Like, I went to Anime Expo, and holy shit, it was just, like, Everywhere, every table, every booth, like, had some sort of stuff to it. As we speak now, I believe there is some kind of con going on in which they are trying to, in in America, they're trying to gather as many people. I think it's in San Diego. Is there a con in San Diego today or something? Yes, it is the Comic-Con, San Diego Comic-Con. Okay, (laughs) so at San Diego Comic-Con, they're trying to get as much uh, DBZ people as they can, including... uh, uh, Rhyme Style, who is a person who has been on Modcast and stuff like that. I know him and stuff. Um, they're all getting together to record the longest Kamiyamiha done by a large group of people. <laughs> oh my god. You know what? I understand it, though, because I've been a part of something like that. <clears throat> I mean, it sounds cool to yell Kamiyamiha in a room where no one will judge you for yelling out Kamiyamiha. <laughs> but, yeah, the... How they've survived this long is amazing because, again, Akira Toriyama really likes to cut corners in everything he does, and he also will gladly tell you to his face that he cuts corners whenever he can. <laughs> uh, a true artist. A true artist. Wait, I thought I thought he didn't even draw the manga anymore. I thought that... uh, That's the biggest corner he cut. <laughs> yeah, it's true. If you so seriously, if anyone is ever interested in the mindset of Akira Toriyama, buy the Shonen Jump app and then read all of Doctor Slump because Doctor Slump tells maybe the most relatable story of an artist ever made. Because on ep- so uh, in the first chapter, he shows Aurelia and how he draws it, and then fifty chapters later, he talks back about like, um, oh, if someone asked him a question, how come um, Aurelia doesn't need to like be wired to her body anymore, and he goes. Oh, Ah, yes. For the first chapter, I drew an extremely detailed robot body, and then I realized I would have to draw that, draw it that way every single time. So I stopped drawing her that way. <laughs> so it used to be that her head would connect to, like, like it would be an extremely detailed, like, actual system to connect the head. And then he was like, wait, I have to draw this every single time? Fuck that. And then he stopped doing it. Because he's like, eh, it's too much work. And that's the same reason why all of a sudden she went from an extremely detailed girl to uh, a gremlin by, by like, 50 <laughs> chapters in. That's perfect. I love that. Yeah, and uh, the amount of times he's also said, like, oh, who's this character? This is a character from uh, something my editor rejected, and he said that no one would ever want to make a manga with this character. So I included him into Dr. Slump because I ran out of writing ideas. <laughs> <laughs> and he's also now the most hated character in this manga so maybe he was right <laughs> that no one would want to actually read stuff about him Ugh, i love stuff like that it's... i love like creators just like pulling back the curtain and be like yeah that thing you love so much it's really dumb yeah and i'm tired <laughs> yeah I think the what a really funny one, which is uh, it's funny because it made a lot of people go like, "What?" is when uh, the the guy who makes uh, my hero uh, my hero academy. I, I'm trying. I, I, the reason I hesitated because I knew Captain Soldier would correct me with the correct pronunciation. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Okay, fair. Oh no! Oh no! You know? <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Boku no oh, Academia. That's right. He, he doesn't know. He doesn't know the show you're talking about because he said it in English. Oh, okay. The one where it has uh, the the show with Deku and All Might, I believe is that is their names. But he said that All Might was based off of Goku. And I think everyone took a, like, a really big step and went like, what? And he said, yeah, uh, when um, All Might shows up, it's based off of when all the times in Dragon Ball when Goku would show up and he would save the day. And he said specifically because he was a big fan of Dragon Ball and he loved those moments of Goku, he created a character whose entire gimmick was showing up at the last minute and saving the day. Oh my god. 
So when you when you picture <laughs> when you picture All Might and how he goes like never fear I'm here, he's specifically saying that because Goku would show up on like uh, Namek when all of them were fucking beat down and automatically beat down Raccoon with like a, a flying a, a arm drop or something like. So that's what All Might is kind of based off of of like the idea of like and obviously his own he's different from Goku as like an actual character, but the basic like the crystallization of the idea started with I really like that Goku does this and what if I made that into a character <laughs> and there you go <laughs> there's All Might Watashi ga kita. <laughs> <laughs> and see that's another character where in the dub because it's voiced by Piccolo it's completely different <laughs> for me I, I'm okay with that I'm okay with his voice being Piccolo's voice because I'm okay with Piccolo's voice just in general yeah, I love Piccolo's voice too. And to be fair, when he's All Might, he does put a voice on it. But when he's entering a uh, shitty All Might mode, or I guess true All Might mode, when he's all injured, he go- that's when you actually hear the Piccolo. But when he's uh, when he's big ass form, that's when he tries to do the um, he tries to put an inflection on it. Uh, I should also say, so the one of the reasons we also picked this topic is we were talking about this offhand, but Captain Soldier was specifically talking about how he knew someone who hated dubs who actually liked the dub of Evangelion. I, I remember who it was, by the way. This happened on the 4th of July. I was at a pool party. We were drunk. <laughs> okay, so that explains just... a lot. <laughs> this explains a lot. Yes. Uh, but, no, I, I, he... He specifically just does not like dubs. He'll watch anime. And he'll, like, marathon a bunch of anime. And I I, I respect his opinion. Like, so you, you were saying that, you know, mm. if he thinks everything is trash, wouldn't that mean that um, his opinion wasn't very good to begin with? I respect his opinion because there's a bunch of stuff that I like personally and he'll call trash. And then when he does recommend something good, it is actually really fucking good so that's why i respect his opinion mm. but he was saying Tell- that if you watch evangelion don't watch the old dub watch the new one that's on netflix uh, did he give a reason why because again everyone has all called the new dub boring and also a, such a straight translation that it actually defeats the purpose of translation well i don't know I can't defend it in this case because I've never watched a single episode. Mm, that's fair. And the the main reason, the thing I was saying was that the idea of someone, and this is someone that's very similar to someone at work, where they go <laughs> like, a lot of the stuff that it ends up being like, maybe it's because I know a person like this, but every single time they've told me why something I liked was bad, their reasons were shitty. So when, just because they occasionally get something good and then they hate the other thing because it's like that, that's why it makes me go like, maybe your opinion is that you're just an extremely picky eater. Just like you shouldn't listen to me when it comes to eating food because I'll be like, <laughs> just get a, just get a burger with cheese. That's all you need. I am correct. That doesn't mean that I'm correct that you should have nothing else on the burger. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, uh, soldier, what is, uh, what is your what is one of his recommendations? It's a good question. <laughs> it's actually very hard. I, that that is a, a question that requires me to sit and think of all the anime that we have watched. Because like, there there are, there are dumb anime, right? Ones that aren't aren't meant to be taken seriously. That he said, oh yeah, I remember watching that. That shit was funny as fuck, right? Yeah. And, and then there are other anime. It's usually the serious anime that he shits on, and it's always. The same, like, that anime is garbage. <laughs> and then he'll, like, go into why. And I'll be like, oh, okay, I guess I guess that makes sense. But, like, it's completely, it's a complete overreaction. So, like, with Attack on Titan, he's like, yeah, that show was cool. That, that show had a lot more potential, but it's dumb as fuck. And I was like, why? He's like, well, they're doing shit, like, you know, Going or like launching themselves up giant buildings, but when you look at the town, there's no fucking buildings that tall, so it makes no sense as to why they're fucking shooting that far in the air. Kind of like how people were wondering why the fuck Peter was like swinging from or basically placing webs nowhere in fucking Endgame when there was nowhere to uh, put them onto. So it, he, he like that one detail he just did not like, and it made him shit on the whole series. So it's stuff like that. So he is just a very picky person, is what it sounds like. Oh no, he's very he's very detail oriented. I would say I wouldn't say picky because he watches. I I would say he watches more anime than all three of us combined. Mm-hmm. It's just 
whether he likes it or not is a different story. But he he still consumes it. Hmm. So it's kind of okay. That's a very weird person. Maybe it's just because he's seen too much. It's similar to like those people who would like watch too much porn and they can't like uh, jack it to like regular porn, so they need to find really like different and interesting <laughs> stuff. That is a terrible, a very terrible and very specific com- like <laughs> like, <laughs> like comparison. <laughs> what? I don't uh, know anybody no, who's I like that. It. I like it. I like it. That works. <laughs> the idea is that you're just so used to like seeing this. It's okay. Let me maybe if I switch away from porn, maybe we go into something like it's like similar to let's say a horror movie. If you like, if you consume a lot of horror movies, um, you start to realize like, man, no man can actually machete a man in half like that. That's insane. That's and then possible. you. It, and then you end up appreciate, but you still watch it. You still watch stuff like that because in some way you literally like horror movies. But also for you to truly think like something is excellent in this thing, it has to do something different that the others aren't really doing, or it's it's it, the details of it are so uh, good that you're just like, oh my god, this one basically it it tells a complete like. It just makes sense. Like, the thing of, like, the Attack on Titan thing, I would never think about that at all. It'd be the last thing I would think about. (laughs) But for someone who watches a lot of stuff, maybe that's enough because they're like, well, I've seen it all. And this one thing, it's just not enough. Man, I would say the new Ava dub is not that, though. (laughs) Um, Because as over-the-top as 90s dubs are, like, there's sometimes you just have to take it for what it was and let it be what it is Mm -hmm. because like have you can you have you have you gone back and tried to watch like any tenshi muyo i haven't even watched it the first time don't don't (laughs) did you did you just turn it off when like dragon ball was done Yeah, first of all, what how the fucking hell? Did? Tenchi Muyo is fucking awesome. Tenchi in Tokyo, I literally mind bro- it bo- mind broke me. It was fucked up. Wait, I didn't say anything bad about Tenchi Muyo. I've just said I've never watched it. What? Yeah, it's we're a, we're here to say friend. fuck you. How dare you? Didn't never even watch it. <laughs> so to but answer, I bet you watched wait, Code Lyoko. To, I did. I kind of did. Not really. You dirty motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, to answer your question, like my attention span. To be honest, it wasn't that great. So it'd be like Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Z. Oh, hey, look, it's a block of Dragon Ball Z. Then that hour finished. So I was like, all right, I'm going to go do something else now. I was a lot Coming more. Next on Toonami, Dragon Ball Z. And you're I like, was definitely yeah. A lot more like active as a younger child. Like, I, I definitely like going outside and riding my bike and that kind of shit. But yeah, I never watched Tenchi Muyo. I've watched other stuff. Like, I watched Sailor Moon. I watched Listen, sir. Zoids and Gundam. You, you missed out on what is one of the essentials in the creation of harem anime. It's true. It's probably why I have a deep-rooted love for harem. <laughs> Wait, I thought that was like Love Hina, or did that come afterwards? Uh, love, that came during the same time. Lo- yeah, oh. Love Hina is also more the comedy harem, and I will say uh, Tenshi Muyu is more like action harem, similar to like how Negama is... The combination of both ideals is basically you could not have uh, if it wasn't for Tenshi Muyo and if it wasn't for uh, Love Hina, you wouldn't have a bunch of harems that start as comedy uh, um, romance thing and then switch into battle shonens. I didn't I even like say, start watching. Go ahead. Uh, I, I will say I will throw it back to uh, Rumiko Takashi for uh, doing shit like Ranma where everybody loves and or hates Ranma and wants to marry and or murder Ranma. <laughs> it's true. I was going to say, but I, I didn't even really start watching like harem stuff until like college. Oh, it's after. Not- yeah. <laughs> it's not a good genre. Um, let's whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> First of all, fuck you. You're not going to, you're not going to insult. One of the greatest genres out there that's all about just pure love and no, there's no evil. It's just a bunch of fun. <laughs> that's all I, it is. I want to believe you, and I should believe you because I, you, you are not known to like get outraged over stuff like that. So I'm gonna believe you. But <laughs> that being said, it is so weird that you are defending 
that genre specifically <laughs> i really love horror manga i'm not afraid to like say it i can also understand and appre- i can understand not liking it because of its weird uh pervy stuff in it that i'll never fault a person for not wanting to read something because it crosses a border that they don't uh, like they can't like this is too far for them and i think that's perfectly fine but also i think that that genre is just full of a bunch of like good old times and it's a bunch of like just <laughs> love and happiness and like usually nothing bad happens because at worst the only thing someone has to worry about is a romance you, that's not my problem with that genre <laughs> My my problem with that genre normally is like it creates like all these really cool normally female characters and like they're they all have personality and they're all fantastic and they're all different. It's true. Because you know, it's like, oh, you know, everyone's gonna have that wife, you can have that flavor. We gotta give the audience this this fan uh fan what service? Is it? Is that what fan service, saying? yes, yeah. thank you. Um my issue is normally the protagonist who is plain and dumb as shit no consistently <laughs> and i think it's so that they can like people can project themselves onto it but i'm like who the fuck wants that dumbass i the most of the time the dumbasses are specifically like uh, i think lavina has the worst dumbass protagonist i think yes cause he's, yes because he's <laughs> Because I said, like, all he is is like his he's as he's trying to study, but also he gets distracted by Titty every other every other second or so. Wait, so it, to be fair, to be fair, in more recent popular harem, the main character has had more development than just oh shit, I'm gonna slip and fall and grab some Titty real fast. Yeah, they still <laughs> do that. It's just that now that they're going from like the the main protagonist of Yuna has the extremely relatable trait of. I'm poor because a bunch of ghosts have caused me to lose all my money and friends. <laughs> and he also ends up being like very interesting, but um, a lot of early harems are especially that. It's a lot of like dudes who are usually, dudes are usually the worst. They never make the popularity poll and they never even try because it's like they're not cracking even the top <laughs> 10. If a, if a protagonist 20. has like, yeah, even in the top 20, if a protagonist is somehow, uh, hit the top 10 either he's very good or you have a problem with your cast <laughs> that's my feeling on it <laughs> look I, I i used to be interested in it for all the things that you have both listed but i feel like i've matured enough not so much to read it for that but sif- specifically to see that if the ship that i set is gonna sail or not that that's my reason at it's, this age i mean yes at this point i want my specific girl to be happy and if she gets a heart broken, <laughs> then fuck that MC. He could go die in a fucking pile of trash for all I care. <laughs> and with that, I think we're going to have to lose Captain Soldier pretty soon. So we're going to have to just close up this episode of Between Buddies, where we just got to talk to each other and have fun here. Uh, there, don't expect any like conclusions for our topics. We just want to talk to each other. Um, I don't know. I feel like we reached a conclusion earlier. Yeah, kind of. I, I, I want people to comment below uh, favorite harem anime and favorite waifu. There you go. Yeah, I'll actually... up. I have a current favorite. I have a current favorite. Look, look, look. Oh. Might be controversial. The anime just came out, and it's nowhere near where the manga is. But we can't study. Ah, oh, shit. I was about to say we can't study. <laughs> I, I really like we, we can't, can't study. study. <laughs> what is it? Okay, the main character is not a fucking titty grabbing monster. No, he's but not. But I will say, I will say that my ship is the childhood friend in this in this harem manga. So, you know, Team Uruka, Uruka, I can't even say her name. I would probably agree with you on that one, but it's also because I feel like uh, Olga deserves better at this point. So, that's my... Did you say Olga? <laughs> Did you fucking say Olga? I think I, think I said her name wrong, but I don't... Uh, I will say my favorite current harem anime is uh, Batman... And my waifu <laughs> is Tim Drake. That's the ultimate waifu right there. And of course, uh, leave your comments about your favorite horror manga at the bottom. I can't believe I completely fucking mangled that shit at the end. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was also going to say, if you liked if you liked what you heard here, then leave a like. If you haven't subscribed, then hit that subscribe. Join us on Patreon. We don't have a Patreon, so don't join, don't join our Patreon. But uh, hopefully you like this, and we'll come back whenever we can form uh, whenever we can form up again we'll release another episode of between buddies until then say goodbye everyone bye bye
Fuck those goodbyes. We're back. We came up with a new ending. Play me out, Jace. Fly me to the moon and let me swing among the stars. Yeah. Let me see what spring is like on Jupiter and Mars. Break down. <laughs> I'm done. I'm not going to keep going. I needed you to go for at least 30 seconds. <laughs> go! <In other> words. <laughs>